Last month, a box showed up at my door. I mean, well, I mean, I knew it was coming. Like I, I, I had the, um, I had the tracking information for it. Um, it was from the Intrepid Camera Company. This is the Intrepid 4x5 large format camera. And the Intrepid Camera Company were so incredibly generous to send me one of these so that I could finally step up my 4x5 game from shooting with the Graflex. I've already done a detailed video on 4x5 film photography, so I'm not gonna get too into the details of it today about like how it works and how you wanna shoot it. And instead, I just wanna look at the camera and some of what I've shot recently with it. I've been shooting with the Intrepid a bit over the last month or so, and I'm really enjoying it. I borrowed a 210 millimeter lens from a friend and had some T-Max 100, Portra 160, and some Tri-X 320 that I shot with it. Put it over your head so I can Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Ah! Also, shout out to my friends Jackie, Renee, and Carly for hanging out one day in the park for some shots. All right, three, two, one, there you go. I also pulled out a pack of Fuji FP100C Silk Instant Peel Apart film that came to me courtesy of Tony, a big supporter of the channel. This stuff expired around 2016 and looked great. Oh damn! Oh wow, what? Even the sun looks good. A little, so I could bright. go just like a little darker, but like a half stop, but... Happy! <laughs> The silk film has a matte, almost honeycomb-like texture to the images, whereas regular 100C has a glossy finish. Yeah. 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 Okay. Ooh, how's it look? Oh, I cut off all over your head. Damn, but it still looks good. Do you want to do one more? A different pose. Different pose? Yeah. The Intrepid is a field 4x5 camera, so it folds up to be pretty compact and it's easy to travel with. It's very light and has a metal base which is a newer addition to the Intrepid as the older versions used wood for the base. It unfolds and has some very handy built-in bubble levels on both the front and rear standards. The front standard screws into one of the holes on the base and this just depends on what lens you're using so that you can focus properly. It has a very nice range of movement for tilt, shift, rise, and fall that you can use to change the framing or angle that your lens is to your focal plane. You mount your lens just as you would with other large format cameras, using an appropriately sized lens board and then just a tab that locks the lens into place. A knob at the back of the camera allows you to focus by moving the front standard in or out. The Intrepid also has a rotating back, so you can change from portrait or landscape orientation easily. This isn't an uncommon feature of large format cameras, but certain cameras, such as my Graflex for example, can't do this, so I love having a camera that can. The rear standard also has the ground glass, and it's a graph lock back, which means you can use it with most film holders out there. Not just sheet film holders, but larger things like medium format film backs, which you can attach by removing the ground glass and using the tabs to lock the holder into place. 
It's definitely a step up from my Graflex. There are similar sizes, but the Graflex is heavier for sure, and more limited with the movements that it can do. The Intrepid feels good. It maybe isn't the most sturdy 4x5 camera out there, but I do love the quality of the wooden frame and how light it is, so packing it into a bag with some film holders and lenses and other accessories does make for a great kit that doesn't necessarily get too heavy. I've had a great first experience so far with the Intrepid, and I've also kind of wanted one of these for a few years now, so I'm pretty happy about it. I'm also a little more excited to shoot with it in comparison to using the Graflex for 4x5 all the time. I love the Graflex, but it's not as flexible or as sleek in comparison to the Intrepid. Intrepid also has some interesting options for darkroom photo enlargers, and they sent me one of their compact enlargers along with the camera itself. I haven't had a chance to get into a proper darkroom just yet and do a setup and print with the enlarger, but so far unboxing it, I really like the look of it and I'm really excited to dig into it. So it definitely deserves its own video in the future. I am really loving the design of it because of how small it is and I think it's really well suited for beginners or people who don't have a full darkroom setup. Maybe they have a small one at home in a bathroom or like a laundry room or something. A little compact and larger like this is a great option for people who are doing this stuff at home. I honestly recommend considering Intrepid cameras if you're serious about getting into large format shooting. There are of course cheaper options out there like Graflexes sometimes and there are definitely much more expensive options out there, but Intrepid is a solid choice in terms of camera bodies for large format shooting. It allows for a great range of movement in order to take full advantage of shooting on large format. And of course, like all large format cameras, you can get such a variety of lenses and film backs for different formats that it really opens itself up to a huge variety of creativity. Thank you so much for checking this out. And of course, thank you so much to Intrepid for sending me one of these cameras. I'm genuinely very, 
very happy to have one of these and I will link to their website in the description below. All of the portrait four x five shots that you saw in this video were developed here in Toronto at Downtown Camera and I will link to their website as well in the description below. And of course, thank you to Justine, my friend who lent me this lens for use with uh, pretty much everything that I shot in this video. I've just been shooting on the 210. It's been a lot of fun to explore that. You can also find links in the description below for ways to support the channel if you have interest in sending any oddities and fun stuff along to the channel through the P.O. Box address that's there as well. And as always, thank you so much and I'll see you soon.